All right, let's evaluate these limits. And um, we're going to come across a, a tricky uh, concept, uh, especially with this second limit here. And um, so I'll try to be as clear as possible so that it makes good sense to you. And uh, so I'll start with, with this one right here. So limit as x approaches infinity for all this. And how do we get started? Well, um, we're going to divide the top and the bottom by basically the highest power of x here. So I shall just multiply. I said divide, but basically it would be just multiplying by the reciprocal. Um, so 1 over the square root of x squared. And my pen is a little bit... Let me just change the settings here so that... I think that's going to be better. Okay, So 1 over the square root of x squared. And this will make sense in just a second if you haven't seen this before. Why am I doing this? Well, because once once I multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over the square root of x squared, magical things will happen. You'll see. So I need to distribute the 1 over the square root of x squared. So I get 5x over the square root of x squared plus 2 over the square root of x squared. Then now over here, down below, I'm multiplying a radical by a radical, right? So the x squared just sneaks in there and multiplies everything. So 9x squared times x squared, or 1 over x squared, we're going to get 9x squared over x squared. So the x squared just sneaks into the radical there. Minus 6x over x squared plus 2 over x squared. Okay, so now I should mention something really important about this particular issue we're going to run into. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Okay, and if we write this as a piecewise function, it's going to look like this. It's going to be x as long as x is greater or equal to 0. And it's going to be negative x if x is smaller than 0. Okay, so that's just basically the absolute value of x. So how is this going to affect us in this case? Well, x is going to infinity, to positive infinity in this case. So the square root of x squared is just going to be positive x. But in this case here, later, when it goes to negative infinity, we're going to have to put in a negative x there. We're going to talk more about that later. So, so far in this case, we're just replacing this the square root of x squared is just x. So for both of them here, it's just x. And then in this case, they're going to cancel out over here, right? Then we have this all over. Now, what else is going to cancel out down below in the denominator? x squared and x squared, they're going to go away. x with the x squared. And so we end up with just 9 minus 6 over x plus 2 over x squared. Now, great. Now, take a look at this. The limit as x approaches... Oh, I forgot to write infinity here. There we go. As x approaches infinity, this will approach 0. So that'll be a, a 0 there. It'll become a 0. So will this and that. Okay? So, so far we're left with the 5 and the square root of 9 below. Because, so we get 5 plus 0 over the square root of 9 minus 0 plus 0. So we don't have to write any of this anyway. So the answer will be 5 over the square root of 9, which is 3. So that's the limit. That's the value of the first limit that we have. Great. So now how about the second one? Are we going to get the same thing for the limit as x approaches negative infinity? Ah, we'll see. Um, so we're going to have to do the same thing we did here anyway. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over the square root of x squared. 
Great. So you get the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 5x over the square root of x squared plus 2 over the square root of x squared all over. Now again the we we have the one over the square root of x squared, so the x squared just sneaks into the root here. And we get 9x squared over x squared minus 6x over x squared plus 2 over x squared. Great, so many things are going to cancel out again. Those will cancel out completely. Those will cancel out. And here we have 2 over x squared. Now up top, something interesting is going to happen. The x squared, the square root of x squared, like we said, we set it over here, is actually going to become negative x. And why is that? Because we're plugging in, or rather, we're taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity. It's a negative value. And because of that, x is smaller than 0, so we take the negative x. So we get 5x over negative x plus 2 over negative x over the square root of 9 minus 6 over x plus 2 over x squared. We're taking the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Fantastic. So what happens now? Well, these cancel out, so we get 5 over negative 1, and that's just negative 5. This will become 0 as x approaches negative infinity, and so will this and that. So we're left with just 5 over negative 1, which is negative 5, over the square root of 9, which is 3. Look at that. So the limit as x approaches positive infinity for this whole thing is positive 5 over 3. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity will work out to be negative 5 over 3. That's it.